If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. Matthew chapter 5 verse 29. We all struggle with how to control sinful impulses or desires. The Apostle James says in James chapter 1 verses 14 to 15. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire when it has conceived gives birth to sin, and sin when it is fully grown brings forth death. It is part of our human nature to feel these impulses, whether to lie, steal, fornicate, cheat, steal, swear. But it is part of the Christian life to control such impulses. Unfortunately, that is not always the case. We are told in Proverbs that a person who lacks self-control is like a city whose walls are broken. Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control, Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28. Eve could not resist the impulse to eat off the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was desirable to make, one, wise, she took from its fruit and ate, and she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Sometimes the impulses we feel can be so strong that they can overcome commitments and common sense. We read about David who could not resist the impulse to commit adultery with Bathsheba. He could not control his desire, because the woman was beautiful to look upon. We read about Samson who could not resist Philistine women, even when they had tried several times to harm him. We read about respectable individuals who were caught sleeping with their help. Or of an adult raping a five-year-old child. When a person is overwhelmed by these impulses they think they have no other option than to give in to the temptation. We cannot fight the battle against the flesh with our flesh. If sinful impulses could be overcome by strength, Samson would never have fallen. The battle against the flesh is a spiritual battle. And the first point of call is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only in believing in the finished work of Jesus on the cross that the power of sin is broken in our lives. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, the new has come. We become the children of God, and we are no longer ruled by our sinful natures. Romans chapter 6 verses 17 to 18 says. But thanks be to God, that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. Any believer who is born of God immediately begins the process of sanctification which means he or she is separated or set apart for God's exclusive use. So 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, You were in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Whereas before we came to Christ we were unrighteous, now by coming to Christ we are made holy before God. But the manifestation of this new life takes time and discipline by the new believer. He or she would continue to struggle with controlling sinful impulses, even more mature Christians still go through that struggle. Romans chapter 7 verses 18 to 20 says. For I know that nothing good dwells in me, that is, in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. Does that mean the believer can never control these sinful impulses? The Bible offers sufficient hope that we can do it. When we receive the gift of salvation, the Holy Spirit makes his abode in your heart. As you continue to yield to the Holy Spirit, he produces self-control in you. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 13 and 15 exhort us to prepare, are, minds for action, be self-controlled, set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Dot. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. This self-control is not something we develop on our own. It is a fruit that is born out of our close relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 15 verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. It is only as we continue to rely on Christ that we bear the fruits of the Spirit. So far, we have learned that the Holy Spirit produces in us self-control, and this enables us to control our impulse to sin.
Another thing the Holy Spirit does in our lives is that it leads us into all truth. John chapter 16 verse 13 says. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. When the Holy Spirit exposes the truth in God's word to us, we are better able to walk away from any impulse that seeks to lead us astray. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he used the truth of God's word to dismiss the temptations of Satan. The Holy Spirit in us enables us to have the mind of Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, For who has understood the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Therefore, when any thought or word comes into our minds, we easily recognize those ones that are not from God, and so dismiss them. Such negative impulses or thoughts come from my sinful nature or from the devil, but I am no longer their slaves. The Holy Spirit enables us to take any thought that comes into our minds captive. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 5 says. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God, and take every thought captive to obey Christ. Knowing the truth sets us free from falsehoods. We can combat impulses to sin by utilizing the truths that the Holy Spirit reveals to us. When we encounter false doctrine, we can rely on the truth the Holy Spirit reveals to dismiss them. When we are under pressure from friends to undertake any activity, we can fall on the truth to know that those activities are wrong, and we walk away. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 says. Knowing therefore the fear of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I hope that we are made manifest also in your consciences. I use this verse this way, knowing the fear of the Lord I persuade myself not to sin. Bible has said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, so be wise and persuade yourself not to fall for temptation. Because you know that all who practice unrighteousness will go to hell. As I have alluded to earlier, controlling sinful impulses does not happen overnight. But we must be determined to achieve it, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 27 says. But I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others I myself should be disqualified. Paul had a goal, to finish the race and get a crown. And so every day, like an athlete, he subjects himself to the rigors of training. That is the way to go, we are winners, not quitters. The Bible calls us, overcomers, by faith. 1 John chapter 5 verse 4. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Are you born of God? Then you are an overcomer. You are not at the mercy of sinful impulses. You can control them through the power of God which is in you. Sometimes we need the support of other Christians to become overcomers. I have had the opportunity to walk with a Christian with whom I shared my struggles with. And I benefited immensely from his wisdom and directions as we learn to continuously say, no, to our sinful impulses. We become less and less focused on the things of the world in the flesh. Our minds will be more fixed on the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We may experience some loss and a sense of deprivation. I have had to walk away from lucrative contracts because their demands were against the moral compass of God. I have had to miss out on some fun parties because the atmosphere was not right for a child of God. But in all of these losses and pain, there was not an iota of doubt in my mind that, I would reap a harvest of righteousness and peace as we are told in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 11. In the pursuit of our careers let us always remember. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he adds no sorrow with it, Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22. Many a career has been ruined because Christians have failed to control their sinful impulses. Many a home has been torn apart because Christians failed to control their sinful impulses. Every morning, Remind yourself of who you are. You are the child of a king, and sin shall not have dominion over you. And then join Paul to say, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. If you have been blessed by this message, support our work by subscribing to our YouTube channel and sharing this video with friends and family. God bless you. Amen.